Welcome to Innovation, boys and girls. And today we are going to look at how to print things. Now, we have all printed things on paper and we have printed things with a printer, but how did printing first start? And that's what we are going to look at today. And to look at that, I'm going to bring back my friend, I am, and I am is going to tell us all about how we first started printing. So let's bring back I am. I am, you want to come on in here? Great. Hi, I am. Before the printing press was invented, any writings and drawings had to be completed painstakingly by hand. Several different materials were used to transcribe books. They used clay and papyrus, wax, and parchment. It wasn't just anyone who was allowed to do this. This work was done usually for somebody called a scribe. This person lived and worked often in monasteries. In the Dark Ages and Middle Ages, books were usually only owned by monasteries, educational institutions, or extremely rich people. Most books were religious in nature. But then, during the 1300s to 1400s, people had developed a very basic form of printing. It involved letters or images cut on blocks of wood. The block would then be dipped in ink and then stamped onto paper. Look at them make that fish. That's really cool. Two colors in everything. Beautiful work. Around the late 1430s, a German man named Johann Gutenberg was quite desperate to find a way to make some money. Now, he already had some previous experience working at a mint where they make coins, and he realized that if he could use cut blocks that they use for printing inside a machine, he could make the printing process a lot faster. Even better, he would be able to reproduce texts in great numbers and then start selling them. Thanks, I am. Um, that was really Bye great. Now. So what we're going to look at next is how do we do that in code? You know, what are the ways that we can make things duplicate themselves easily, much like Gutenberg did in code? So to do that, first we need to go to Scratch. And you might have forgotten since last year, but I'm going to remind you, the website Oops, let me get my marker. Got my eraser up. There we go. Scratch.mit.edu. Let me fix my T there. So we're going to go to scratch.mit.edu. Let me do that now. This is what it looks like if you forget. And I know some of you have an account already. If you remember what that account is, that's great. You can click sign in and use your username and your password was um, your uh, lion and lunch code password, the same one that we use for Google. But if you forget it, we could create a new account. So what you could do is click join scratch and then type in a username, but pick a username that you're gonna remember. Don't pick a username that you're gonna forget. Don't use your real name because this will be public. This will be something that other people can see. So definitely don't use your real name. Then you're gonna create a password 
and then you're going to type the password again. Now, when you create the password and set up your account, it's going to ask you if you want to save your information. Save your information, write down your username and password somewhere because once you do this, I probably can't reset your password. Uh, there's just too many of you to get you all into uh, one account for me. So there's limitations on what Scratch can do. But if you forget your password, you can always go ahead and set up another account. The other way of doing this would be to use a piece of software called Scratch Desktop, but that doesn't work on Chromebooks. If you're using a regular computer, you can sign up for Scratch Desktop, download that software and install it on your computer, and then you'd never have to worry about signing in. All of your work will be saved on your computer. So you would create a username, create a password, hit next, whoops. I would have to do all of that. And then it's gonna ask you to confirm your account once you do that, you're all set to sign in. So I'm gonna sign in and here is my account. So let's talk about how to create a new project. Again, I'm just reminding you, we've done this before. We're gonna click this Scratch logo up here and then we're gonna click Create. And you can see it's creating the project for me and then I get my cat. And what we're gonna look at today is how to use the cloning feature. Now, first, what is cloning? Well, cloning is when you make a copy of something. So we're gonna make a copy of some object and make it do something. So I'm gonna create a new sprite. So I'm gonna go and find a good sprite. I think I want... I want a tree or something. So let me look to see what I can find. Let's see, something that looks like a tree or something that's like a background element. Mm, rocks aren't good. I want something that can, oh, here's a tree. Perfect. So I'm gonna put a tree, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tree, I'm gonna kind of drag it off so it's out of the scene a little bit. And then I'm going to start some code. So the first thing code we want to do is when green flag clicked. So that way, when I click the green flag, the program will start. Now, the first thing, the second thing I want to do is this tree here. I don't want to see this tree when I first click the green flag. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hide the tree. So we can see what happens is when I click it, it hides, except now it's gone. It's not on the screen anymore. So I need to make sure that I show the tree. But I'm going to show it after I do something special. I'm going to pull out the clone block. Now, just like um, Gutenberg, when we went to copy something, rather than having to redraw the cat every time or create another cat or another tree sprite over and over and over again down here, I wanna create a system, a mechanical system like Gutenberg did, only this will be in code, that will create the copies for us. And that's what the clone block does. So I'm gonna go into control. I'm gonna find, create a clone of myself. Now I wanna make sure I'm in the tree because I could create clones of other things, but I want to create a clone of the tree. So I'm going to create a clone of myself. Now, the other thing I want to do now is I want to wait because I don't want to create like, I don't know, 100 million trees all at once. And that's what will happen here if we just let this go. So it'll create a clone of myself. And I'm gonna get it to repeat that. So I'm gonna get it to do it over and over and over again. So I'm gonna put it in a forever loop. Now this will happen forever and I'll create, like I said, 100 million trees. We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is put a wait in. So we can choose how long we wait before we create the next tree. The amount of time that you wait is going to kind of add to the illusion. Now. Another fun thing you could do is we could go in, let me find it, 
and create a random number. There it is under operators. So instead of just waiting one second, I could pick a random number, let's say between one and three seconds. So it'll wait between one and three seconds before it creates the next tree. That's the first part of it. The second part of it is I need to have the clone do something. So we're going to use this block here when I start as a clone. And what do I want it to do? Well, the first thing I want it to do is I want it to show itself. So I'm going to click on show. I need it to show itself. Once the clone shows itself, then I need it to move. So I want to make sure that it starts somewhere about the right location, which was over here. Now it's there right now. It's a 249 Y of zero. 249 is the edge of the right hand side of the screen. The middle is at zero and the left side of the screen is at negative 249. So the full distance we have is about 500 blocks from left to right. Or yeah, about 500 blocks. So let me go in here and use my motion. And I'm going to first make sure it's at that spot at 249.0. Now, if I want to change that number, I can and have it go to a different spot. But let's just see what happens when I do this. Now, it's creating an infinite number of these. They're all on top of each other. You can see there's a whole bunch of them. I don't want that many trees. So we're going to have to fix that. The second thing we're gonna do is move the tree across the screen. So I'm gonna glide it across the screen. But remember what I said about the other side of the screen being at negative 249? So when I hit the green flag, there it is. Wow, that took one second to go across. I think that's a little fast. We might want to slow it down between one and three seconds. Oh, that's better. And again, we might want to do a random choice. So they kind of move at different speeds. But that's going to make the cat kind of look like it's moving faster and slower. So I think what we want to do is just pick one speed. So that way the cat looks like he's just moving at a constant speed. So let's do that. I like that. But then we have all these trees kind of piling up here. That's a problem. So what we need to do is get the clone to delete itself after it's done gliding. And look. It looks like our cat is walking. Now, here's the thing. The cat is walking behind the trees. We may want to make it walk in front of the trees. Or we might want to make it walk some behind the trees and some in front of the trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this tree. And there's a second tree. Now, the great thing about duplicating it is it has the same code. So I can now order these trees. So the first thing I wanna to do to order the trees is I wanna go and look for this block down here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll pull it over here so you can see it. It's either go to front layer or go forward one layer. So we're gonna position these things in layers. So we want the cat on the front layer. Well, actually on the, the second layer. So we want the tree one to go to the front layer. So let me find that block again. So we're gonna go to the front layer. So we know these trees are in front of the cat. Now these trees, we want to go to the back layer.
and these trees are behind the cat. So now it looks like the cat is walking in trees, some in front and some in back. But to increase the illusion, I'm gonna change the Y value of these trees so they're a little bit further back. So we have to start them at a different spot. So let me hit stop. And we're going to have to make sure our trees start at the 249 and the 50. And then we have to make sure they glide and the Y value is the same at 50. Otherwise, our trees look like they kind of move up and down, and that's not quite right. We don't want our trees moving up and down. So let's take a look. That looks pretty good. It looks like now our cat is walking through a forest. So that's great. There's only one other thing. Our cat doesn't seem to be moving his feet. He seems to be just kind of flying through, which we could do. We could make him fly through. But I think what we want to do is make him walk. To make him walk, we're going to copy his feet. If we look at his costume, we can see that it has two different costumes. Now, this is going to be a different kind of copying. What we're going to do is just loop the feet so they switch from costume to costume, and it looks like our cat is walking. Now you could do this with other characters. Other characters have, have multiple costumes. You could also draw your own character. You can also import what's called an animated GIF. I remember some of the older kids, we did that last year. You might remember how to do that. So let's take a look at our code. Let me hit stop now. And what I want to do is when the green flag is clicked. Now this is interesting. I want to make sure everybody understands that. I now have three when green flag is clicked. One for each of the trees and then one for the cat. You can have multiple when green flag is clicked. So that way all of those events all happen at the same time when green flag is clicked. Do you remember that word from last year, event? That's when something happens and makes something else happen. So let's get our event and we wanna make our cat move. So we're gonna need a loop. We'll do another forever loop. And we want our cat to switch its costume and we can do that just by next costume. However, we want to slow it down so it's not super, super fast. If we don't slow it down so it's not super fast, the feet are going to move really, really crazy. So let's take a look. Like he's really, really running fast and like the computer can't even keep up that he's running so fast. So we want to put a weight in there. So we're going to go to control. We're going to go to weight and add a weight in. Now, the fun thing about weight is you don't have to wait just all by whole seconds. You can wait by fractions of a second. So I'm going to put in 0.25 and see what that looks like for our cat. That looks pretty good. It looks like he's running through the forest. Now to complete the illusion, I want one more thing. I need a plain backdrop. So the plain backdrop, I'm going to probably just draw so I'm gonna click on the paint icon. I don't know if you can see it right there, the paint icon. And what I wanna do is I wanna draw in first a blue rectangle. So let me change the fill to a nice sky blue. That's nice. And draw in a nice sky blue. Oh wait, it's got an outline. I don't want an outline. No outlines, skies don't have outlines. So we're gonna do no outline, that's the red slash, means no outline. I'm gonna draw a blue sky. Oh, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna add another part to my backdrop, another rectangle, and I'm gonna add in maybe a little bit of grass. 
but I'm going to do this in two different spots. I'm going to do it here. That's good. And then I'm going to add in another for the bottom. And next, let's see, let's move this a little bit closer here and a little bit closer here. So, oops. Want a little bit more grass, I think. Just so it looks like the trees are actually on the grass. Getting closer. Oh, I think that's pretty good. If you don't like something, you also have this undo button that you could undo it with. Now the last piece is I want to draw in a path. So I'm going to do this kind of gray, whoops. A gray fill for like a path. And there we go. So now we have our cat running along this gray path in the forest. And we didn't have to draw and animate all of those trees. We only had to draw two trees. And if we wanted to modify the trees, we could, you know, if you wanted to go through and maybe make them an apple tree, you could do that. You know, we could put in some red. Find a nice red, maybe. There's a good red. And then we could draw in a little circle or an apple if we wanted to, you know? So that way this side of the tree maybe has apples on it, right? And then the other trees don't have apples. So that way we can see the difference between the two trees and might make it a little bit easier. Or, you know, you could add more apples to this one, and the, but they're in different spots. So we can really see, you know, the difference between the front and the back. So now I have him running through an apple orchard. Okay, so let me stop this. So when you're all done and you're ready to share your project, you have to click this share button up here. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. If we don't share our project, then nobody can see it. So if you wanna share this with people, what you have to do, so you click the share button. You also want to title it and give it a good name. Once you've titled it and shared it, you can then pass along this link to anybody you want. Uh, you could send it to mom or grandma. You could send it to a grandpa. You could send it to dad. You could send it to uncles, aunts, whatever caretaker you have, and everyone can see your project. You could also send it to other students and you can send it to me. And that's one of the things that I'm going to ask you to do is just submit a link if you can in Canvas to your project. So to do that, we are going to go into our Canvas course and go to innovation. And then let me zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. We are going to look for the assignment which is the cloning assignment. Switched it to student view so you guys could see the assignment. So when I click on the student assignment, I am then gonna hit submit assignment. You can see that it is a website or URL. Click submit assignment. And then we're just gonna paste in the link. So I'm gonna go back to my project. I'm gonna copy the link, so I'm gonna highlight it. I can either press control C or I can right click and click on copy. Then I'm gonna go into the project and I'm gonna press right click, paste, or I can press control V. And then I can say, this is my project. And then I hit submit assignment. Hey, it's submitted, fantastic. Okay, let me turn this off. 
So that is the lesson for today. Remember what we learned. We learned all about how the printing press started from our friend I am, and we learned how we can use Scratch to clone our cat well, actually not our cat, our trees, in order to make a screen scrolling animation. I bet some of you can come up with some great ways to use that animation. We might do that later on and maybe create something really cool. That's it for today's episode. I'll see you next time.